Okay. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Tornado Podcast. I'm Tyler. I'm Nick. And if you missed our first episode talking about the Rochelle tornado last week, we will link that in the description below. Um, today, we'll be discussing Hollywood's hand in tornado science with some of their more notorious disaster films that are centered around the subject of, torna of tornadoes, such as um, Into the Storm, uh, Night of the Twisters, and then, of course, the classic Twister. So, um, which one do we want to start talking about first? Okay, so just a disclaimer. I am using my phone, as you see here, because we were having issues with my audio connecting. We are really late starting this, like an hour late, because we've just been having issue after issue. We thought this one would go a lot smoother because it's our second podcast, but it seems to be a lot worse. <laughs> we're just the podcast so, with technical issues, apparently. Yes. <laughs> so... If the audio sounds even worse than it did last week, and I apologize for my audio sounding bad, it's because I'm, I'm using my phone this week. So I think we were going to start off with Night of the Twister and work our way up to Twister since that is, Tyler, our favorite tornado movie. Spoiler alert. Get my... Yes. And how many times do you think we've seen that collectively? Uh, well, for me, it was... It's been probably close to a thousand, no joke. Um, for you, yeah, we've, yeah, I'd say conservatively three hundred times. Yeah, so that's about thirteen hundred times between the both of us. <laughs> I well, have it on VHS. Year, the movie is twenty about to be twenty five years old, so it's been around for a minute. It'll be twenty four years old next year. Well, I know. I said it's getting close to 25. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, so... It is the same age as me. Didn't Night, Night of the Twisters come out in 96 as well? It, it did. But that one was... Yeah, the, I think it was ABC Family. <laughs> yeah. Which... 1996 was the year of made-for-TV tornado movies. That was also the year Tornado came out. And if you don't know what, what we're talking about, it's Tornado! Exclamation point. That's what yes. it's called. Tornado! Yes. Yes. Exclamation point. Yes. That one was basically a complete knockoff. A, the cheapest knockoff of Twister you can have. We both like the movie, but let's be honest. It tried so hard to be Twister and failed at every way of being Twister. It's just a fun movie because it's so bad. And it's not like some of the other 20 movies out there where like it's so bad that's unenjoyable. I mean, we'll get to one of those here in a bit, but um, I think my favorite part was um, I like Ernie Hudson. Is that his name? Ernest Hudson? I... Ernie Hudson, the he plays like the the guy who is he the guy that's in all like the Hallmark Christmas movies now. Oh, I don't know, but okay. he's the guy that designed uh, their version of Toto and Dorothy. I think it was called Patty. Um, um let me get on Internet Movie Database and. Yes, Ernie Hudson played Dr. Joe Branson. Yeah, I think he was my... Although the, the grandpa was pretty entertaining in that movie as well. Okay. That, the the grandpa, I think he might be the guy I'm thinking of. Maybe I'm thinking of two... I'm not good when it comes to actors. Did you ever see the... Back when SNL was good, they had the one skit that was um the celebrity translator. No, I never really got into SNL, so. Okay, because that's, that's what I need. It was a thing for um, your parents who, would all, who wouldn't know who celebrities are, and they would talk about the celebrity, and then it would translate who they were talking about. That's what I need. Yeah. But anyway, we're not here to talk about Tornado! Exclamation point. We kind of got <laughs> sidetracked. Uh, so Night of the Twisters is a made for TV movie like we talked 
talked about, uh, John Schneider and Devon Sawa. Um, it's based off of the book, Night of the Twisters, but not only that, um, it's based off of an actual tornadic event that occurred in, it was 1980, right? Yes. The Night of the Twisters was either June 1st or 2nd. I'm looking that up. This is something we should have known before we started this, but. I know, but we were dealing with our own. And especially because this was a, something, Night of the Twisters was something, not the movie, the actual event was something that we planned well, on talking probably. about. <laughs> right. And we will be doing a uh, a podcast on that event at some point. Yes. So it happened on June 3rd, 1980. Okay. And it featured, um, let me look so I can get the exact number. So the outbreak itself featured 18 tornadoes, including enough for as far east as Pennsylvania. It ripped through um, an area just north of Pittsburgh, but it, it's known for the tornadoes that hit Grand Island, Nebraska. There were a total in Nebraska, in the Grand Island area. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven tornadoes. One and which their possible. paths were were looping around each other, crossing each other. The strongest one was an F four, and then there were three F threes, an F two, and two F three F ones. Um, basically, a supercell just sat over the city and just kept yeah. producing tornadoes. From what I understand, I could be wrong about that. <laughs> Similar to Pilger in a way. I mean, I don't know about the the meteorological synopsis of the, the events, but it, you could think of Pilger just over a po more populated area. Right. J just to give a, an idea for those of you who don't know what it is, but if you're listening to this podcast, I'm sure you know while well, watching the podcast because we're not on anything yet for audio. I'm sure you, you know what Night of the Tornadoes, Night of the Twisters was. So anyway, the movie is kind of a fictionalized version of that. Um, although I think in the book, it was... The book uses Grand Island. However, the movie and... Uses a, uses I know. They, they use Blainsburg or Blainsworth, Nebraska, which is a fic fictional town. And they changed it. The actual tornado outbreak occurred in June, and the movie it occurs in either October or November. Yeah. And they try to play it off as like that's not heard of, which, hmm. as we all know, is not true. I mean, look at last month, there was a tornado outbreak in Dallas. So it's not unheard of, but it happens. And oh, that was a really long, awkward. Pause. I know. I thought. Well, I thought you were about to say something. You looked. No, you, had, you had that look on your face. I was waiting. Yeah, someone walked past the window. So, um, like we say, I came out in '96, and at that time, uh, there wasn't a lot of CGI out there, especially for tornadoes. Um, Twister was really groundbreaking in that aspect, but uh, the, I mean, that's the reason why you're watching a movie like that in the first place, is to see the tornadoes, and it's definitely not the worst tornado CGI I've ever seen, um, but once again, it's not the best either. Um, there's some pretty ridiculous um, scenarios that go on. Um, but overall, I actually do enjoy the, the movie quite a bit overall. Um, it has a very campy quality to it that I think is just makes it endearing. Uh, and even I think in the chasing community, it's pretty well beloved, um, for the campiness. Um, granted, I haven't seen it in a while, but I mean, I, I remember enjoying it quite a bit, um. Yeah, I have it on DVD. I remember it was probably at least 15 years ago. 
Um, it was like a dollar ninety nine in the dollar ninety nine DVD section at Walmart. So of course I had to make my parents buy it for me, and I've watched it nowhere near as many times as Twister, but I've seen it a good amount of times. But it's probably been at least four or five years since I've watched it last because I don't even have a DVD player anymore. Well, it is on YouTube for free if anyone cares to watch it. So just look it up on YouTube. <laughs> um, <laughs> trying to think what else. I mean, the act the acting's pretty mediocre, but... Yeah, and not as bad as some of the other Tornado movies that we... No. We're not going to go into detail about, but I'm sure we can gloss over some of the really bad ones. Yeah. Uh, do we want to go ahead and do that now? <laughs> Before we get <laughs> we might as well since really we bad. might as well since, since we we brought it up. So, okay, real quick before we move on, on a scale of one to ten, how would you give Night of the Twisters? Uh, probably five or six. Uh. I'd probably give it a six. It's enjoyable. Um, there's a lot of really, well, I'll t- I take that back. There's not a lot of good tornado scenes, but there's a couple that I really enjoy. Um, I like the first tornado scene, the one that opens up the movie. I like that. Yes, that's a very memorable scene. And I do, there's this very small scene of. Well, do you want to, for the people who haven't seen it, do you just want to briefly talk about what that opening scene was yeah so basically um we're introduced to this meteorologist from the kansas city tornado center um which i wish that was a real place because i would love to work there. Thank you. Um, yeah that's where you'd see me and tyler all the time yep and so he's tracking the storm system in nebraska for the kansas city tornado center and upon this uh, supercell that's unprecedented or whatever the case is. Um, because it is almost winter, so unprecedented set up for that time of the year, which again, right, October, November in Tornado Alley is not unprecedented to get an F3 tornado, which is probably what this first tornado was probably F2 or F3. Mm-hmm. And so there's, we're introduced to the storm chaser guy, and then we're... I, one thing real quick, although I will say, the weather was not really tornado weather. In this beginning scene, it was a gray, cloudy, overcast, cold, rainy day, which we know that's not how you get tornadoes on days like that. Right. So... I guess they were being slightly truthful whenever they said that because that was not a tornado weather day. Just from the yeah. sense of it with that, like with a lot of stratiform rain and it being cold and yeah. Um, and then we're introduced to this. Well, they're not even they're only in this scene, but there's this small little family that who live on a farm. Um, girl gets off the school bus. The dad's working on the tractor, I think. And the yeah, mom, there's some farm animals running around. Yeah, and so the tornado touches down behind the farm, and uh, you still hear me when I'm on speaker. Yeah. Okay. So the Go tor- ahead. I just okay. So the tornado touches down behind the the farm. Um, and I guess they can't tell that the tornado is going on. So the storm chaser guy has to scream at them that there's a tornado coming. And so the family uh, takes shelter and then the tornado blows right through the barn and the house. And it, the funny thing about the the damage, when you see it do damage in this movie, is that the houses instead, they just explode. Um, yeah, yeah, and I mean it looks cool, but not exactly um, accurate. Well, I mean I say that, but there's some instances where it looks like houses just blow apart like that. Um, not in that same fashion, though. Anyway, I'm getting too technical. No, the houses literally exploded. Didn't look like they exploded, but they actually explode as the tornado passes over them. 
Yeah, and then the ap literally right after it hits the house, it dissipates, and and it's a good what three four minutes of the movie um, at the beginning. Yeah, and it, it sets it sets the tone. Yeah, and it's a pretty cool. Now, scene. I enjoy it. Do 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 the family members? Do they all make it into the storm shelter? Yeah. Okay, I can't remember. I know he's yelling for them. They can't really hear him over the sound of the tornado, but he keeps yelling, saying there's a tornado, and they finally realize that run for the sh the sh um mm -hmm. the cellar. But I I can't remember if they actually made it or not. Well, and then, there's a lot of a lot of those cheaper tornado movies where it all starts off the same way basically, but someone doesn't make it to the shelter in time. Yeah. Uh, also, um. My other favorite scene in the movie is a very small scene of it's not it's before the storm gets to Blainsworth, um, puts down another tornado in a different town, um, and the tornado goes through the trailer park and starts throwing trailer houses around. Um, it's literally maybe fifteen seconds, but I don't think I remember that scene. It's very short. Very that same scene played out though in category seven, the end of the world. Yeah. But I don't recall that. I'm gonna have to rewatch Night of the I'm gonna have to rewatch every single movie that we mentioned in this. Yeah. Because it's also, been a while. I think it's interesting that um it's whenever Devon Sawa's character and his friend they're babysitting his little brother and they're home alone during this entire tornadic event going on um and they put a lot of emphasis on those uh old white those myths yeah. that um uh, that used to be around yeah. like shutting off or unplugging all the appliances and opening, opening windows. windows um which i'm kind of glad they touched on that because i mean people still really believe that um and I've never seen that done in a film before. Yeah, that actually just happened um, on Halloween, October 31st. Now, Tyler, you're down in Texas, Tornado Alley. You were getting snow, weren't you? Up here, at, we had a tornado watch. And um, an EF2 tornado did touch down near Philadelphia. But my grandmother, who lives in Altoona, also under the tornado watch, I texted her that there's the tornado watch, and she said, I just got the alert on my phone. I have the windows open. <laughs> the problem so, is, is people st people still open their windows nowadays. The tornado will do that for you. Don't worry. Yes, yes, that is a great meme. Did you ever see that meme? No. Tim Marshall posted on oh, Facebook oh, yes, a while ago. Yes, I have. Yeah. it's been a while, but yeah, I've seen that one. We're gonna have to get him on here. You're gonna have to work your magic and get Tim on on the show. I don't. I don't even know if I could compose myself, honestly. <laughs> I'm already, um, it's hard enough talking to just one person, let alone Tim Marshall. <laughs> but anyway, so. Um, also, um, during that same scene with, with that, the water drains out of the toilet, and then you see the water, they pan up to the roof, the water's going yeah. out the sink pipe. That does not happen. None of the, none of that scene is. I guess they're happens, being, but also pressure difference or something. Yeah, but that doesn't actually happen in real life. And also, one of the things that happens is when you see the shingles flapping in the wind, the rain is still falling vertically. When you know if there's an EF four, well, F four, which is what the tornado, this tornado would have been representing the F four that hit um, Grand Island that night if we're actually basing this scene on reality, um, you're not going to have, even if it's an EF zero tornado, you're not going to have the rain falling vertically as the shingles are lifting off. Yeah. Before the tornado even gets there. It still wouldn't, the rain would be going horizontally or getting, probably would have been getting drawn into the tornado though. And there's this other scene that I think is just really ridiculous. It's, it's during that whole part of the kids preparing the house for the tornado. Is it the table spinning? Yes, but I'm not talking about that. It was before the tornado even hits. They, uh, his friend is playing with that like Native American wind 
stick or whatever and makes that oh. noise. And yeah. then he's like, will you stop that? And he's like, fine. And then later on, we hear that noise again. And it's the exact like, same That's noise. Supposed to be the sound of the tornado is that whipping noise. <laughs> I laugh every time because I'm like, are you kidding me? And it's not even the noise that most people associate with tornadoes. It's not the jet plane sound. It's not just the loud waterfall or a, or a train or just the wind rushing. It's 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 the exact same sound that that By the, the, way, the stick was making. Don't sound like freight trains. I'm just throwing that out there. They don't. Well, no, like... I was just saying it's not the sound you associate with tornadoes. Right. Although, if you're a tornado in the movie Twister, which we'll be talking about, it's actually a goat making that sound. It's a tornado. Did you know that? I thought it was a camel. No, I thought it was a goat. Oh. It could have been a goat. I thought it was a camel, though. But, and we'll expand on this later, but why, because people who talk, I mean, people who don't like Twister... They talk a lot of mess about the, the sound effects for the tornadoes. I'm like, yes, they're kind of ridiculous, but they give the tornado personification and give it personality, which is something I really applaud. And I, I enjoy it. I really do. I love this, the sound effects from that film a lot. Because so, I love that they all sound angry all the time. The tornadoes. <laughs> okay. Anyway, we'll go okay. later. But here, this is just going to be how every episode is. We were going to start talking about some of those other tornado movies we decided not to go in depth about. And then we ended up going in depth about Night of the Twisters. I have a feeling this is how every single episode is going to be, where we just go on these side tangents, which I'm okay with that, but I don't know if the listeners yeah, are well, okay with that. They'll be. So I'm, I'm, sure, I'm sure we'll get angry comments and angry text messages and Snapchats and tweets and whatever. Well, why would why'd you guys do that? Why? Yeah. Okay, so I guess that's about it for Night of the Twisters for me. Is there anything else you want to talk about? Yes. Yeah. Um, the scene where they take cover under the oh, fire yeah. truck and under that, so they're under a they park the fire truck under an overpass, which is already a no no, but also the the other family, um, they're they're in their car and then they get out of their car and they all take cover under the fire truck that's parked under the overpass and the tornado passes over. And I want to point out that the person that takes shelter under the fire truck is the storm chaser. <laughs> yes. He's, in, he's, Although, making, wait, now, no, he's making two big no-nos in one. One is taking shelter under an overpass to begin with, and two is hiding a, under a fire truck thinking that's going to save you when it could flip, you, flip over and crush you to death. But now you also got to remember when this was filmed. This was filmed in 96. After the 1991 Kansas Turnpike tornado, where they showed that video on the national news of the people taking cover under the overpass, which <laughs> that, that video has killed many people, has got many people yeah. killed. And it's that video alone because that became pe – people started doing that for tornado safety during the 1999 Moore tornado. People actually fled their homes, took cover in an overpass, were killed under the overpass when they were sucked out and then bombarded by debris. Their house wasn't even touched. Yeah. But that was at the time thought to be sound well, advice. I mean, so we can't really fault them on that, but now we can look back on it twenty three years later and say that's really cringy for us to watch now. Well even uh the Wichita Falls tornado of nineteen seventy nine, most of the people that died were either in their car or taking shelter under overpasses. So even yeah, back then, we're the, doing that. Yes. What happened during that one, which I feel like the both Wichita Falls tornadoes, we could just have an episode on the Wichita Falls tornadoes. In 1964, there was an F5, yeah. but that one seems to be overshadowed by the F4 that occurred in 1979 because the F4 was much deadlier. It killed 42 people, 
most of them were in cars, like you said, they were stuck in a traffic jam because all cars were pulling under the interstate to avoid the hail, not actually the tornado. They were pulling over to avoid the hail yeah. when the tornado hit. And the one guy, it was in um, one of the tornado video classic movies that Grizzulis put together back in the 90s. I don't know if it, if it was which one it was, but they're interviewing a guy and he, he took cover. He parked his car there. They ran under the, un, he ran under the underpass. He survived. His car was found a quarter of a mile down the road. Yeah, I know exactly which guy you're talking about. Um, yeah, he was an older gentleman. The is actually on, it's not on, I don't think it's on the Vi Tornado Video Classics. No, that was on Tornado Video Classics, but where that came from, the actual documentary, I think it's called Black okay. Tuesday, 20 minute long documentary. Okay, Terrible Tuesday. It is on YouTube to watch. And it's really interesting, so. Yes. And um, was that the one they also have the bank employees that take over? And, yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And the, here we go with another side tension. <laughs> yeah, I know. But one more. And then the there's a the lady who was clinging to the tree, and all, like she, her body was just shattered. All of her bones were broken, pretty much, from clinging onto the tree. And her husband, I think, was killed or something like that. Um, but yeah, anyway. So that's, that's for another episode. Okay, so. So uh, let's cover some of the, the other tornado movies that, now I know, like, we picked these three just because these are the three that, that we both know enough together that we can go back and forth on. Yeah. Um, but there's one. I would probably rank it with or maybe just high or maybe a six or a seven above Night of the Twisters. It's called Atomic Twister. It's from 2002. It was on AMC or TBS. It was a made-for-TV movie. And it's about um, a series of tornadoes that touched down in Tennessee. And they end up causing, they hit a nuclear power plant and this causes it to overheat. And then of course they, they shut it down. They saved the day, but it's a good movie. Uh, the acting it's, it's on par with, with Ned the Twisters. I mean, it's nothing great, but it's, it's not terrible. Like some of these other tornado movies, the graphics are, okay also they're, they're not the best but they're also not the worst we've seen in some of these they're better than some, a lot of the newer ones that you see on like netflix or amazon prime that were on tv like one night and then disappeared and then they show up on these streaming websites for free years later mm. but and you watched the preview and you pointed out though that all the tornadoes when you were watching it just about an hour ago just the the the, the, one, the scene on youtube that had highlighted all the tornado scenes you said they were all moving anti-cyclonic which that we know that wouldn't actually crazy. happen hmm? i said that always drives me crazy it's not even that their tornado is going anti-cyclonic because obviously we get anti-cyclonic tornadoes that's mm -hmm. not a problem one percent of all tornadoes statistically are anti-cyclonic but when you have every single tornado as anti-cyclonic or better yet, in one scene, the tornado is ro rotating cyclonically, and then in the next scene, the tornado is rotating anti-cyclonically. <laughs> it reversed its rotation. Yeah. It's uh, uh, going against laws of physics, apparently. But, but other than that, it's I'd, I'd say it's probably up there with Night of the Twister. Like, I haven't watched it in a while. It is free to watch on Amazon Prime. For those of you that have Amazon Prime, you can watch it for free. If not, there is also a copy. Not as good quality, but it, there is a copy on YouTube to watch. Yeah, I'll have to um, watch it because I haven't seen it. Yeah, definitely watch it. Um, so let's get into some of the the, the more. And we're, we're just going to skip completely over Sharknado because we all know what Sharknado is about. Yeah. It's made to be horrible. It, it's just one of those movies. And... I've watched all of them. Tyler, you've watched all of them. We love Sharknado just to, exactly. I actually have, let me pull up my Apple Music real quick to show you something. I don't know. This is the Funko Pop. 
Sharknado that they came out with. I didn't even know they had that, but that is awesome. I want one of those. I got it for Christmas a few years ago from my parents. <laughs> that that's a great. That yeah. is great. It's on so. I, right here in front of me. I have a bunch of storm chasing twister memorabilia and I have it sitting on my shelf. So in my Apple Music I have well, let me do this. It's kind of awkward because my iPad's kind of big. It's 12.9 inch. Can you, you're not yeah. going to be able to see it. I have, because it's not going to, my, my iPad's not connected to Wi-Fi right now, so it won't let me make it bigger. Sharknado, the song from Sharknado, The Fourth Awakens. It's a song by The Offspring. I like The Offspring, uh -huh. but I like Sharknado, so of course I have to have it in my Apple Music. Yeah, I mean, but it, I have the Twister soundtrack, so... And the score, so. <laughs> but, so we're just going to, that's all we're going to talk about Sharknado, because we know that rat hole we'd go down if we start talking about Sharknado. So, right. um, what are some of your favorite, I say that jokingly, tornado movies that aired on like the sci-fi channel, or don't, have, don't, you, don't you really watch those? I haven't seen them in a long time. Um, but we talked about Tornado. It's going to love that movie. Yes, I bought that. I remember exactly when I bought that. It was like right after the 2011 outbreak, super outbreak. It was on sale on iTunes, and I bought it on my iPod Touch. That's how far back yeah. that was. Wait, I know. Was it my? Yeah, it was my iPod Touch, and then I got the iPhone 3G right after that. That's how long ago this was. I actually, I bought it on... Because this is the iPhone 11. That, I got this one back in the iPhone 3G I actually case. bought it on DVD a couple of years ago at Target. It was in, like, in the $5 section. And it's in a bundle of, like, three other natural disaster movies. So I happened to see it, and I was like, oh, I have to buy it. So <laughs> I, I've seen it a couple times since then. You know, I've maybe seen that because I remember when it was on TV, not obviously when it was on TV the first time because I was born in 96. The movie came out in 96. But I remember watching it on TV when I was a younger kid and then watching it again when I bought it. And then I've watched it maybe one other, one or two other times since I bought it. And it, it gets cringier and cringier. Yeah, but it's... It's fun. I enjoy it. I, I enjoy it because it's so bad. Like, yeah, right. I mean, it's better than some of these other ones, but it's still... Now, the tornado scene where the tornado hits the one town, like, right in the middle of the thing, I love the damage because in a lot of these tornado movies, the damage... Like, you'll sh they'll show an area that was hit by the tornado, and then there's, like, no debris in the next scene, and then... Yeah. Or like an Into the Storm, which we'll be talking about. One of the scenes I, I hate is the part where um, the older brother and the girl, I don't know if it's his girlfriend or whatever, and they're in the one abandoned factory that gets hit and then it collapses in on them and it starts filling up with water. And then the tornado intercept vehicle, whatever it's called in the movie, comes and rescues them. And none of the trees around the building have even branches torn off of them. Like, that's just one of those things about tornado movies that I hate is that. And tornado is like like that at the end where you have the F DF five scene that tries to to be like Twister and when they're putting the probe into it, it's like that too. But the middle part where it hits whatever town that is, the damage damage there it's very realistic. Yeah. And even now, not a tornado movie, but on, along those lines is Desperate Housewives. I've been rewatching Desperate Housewives on Hulu on my free time. I watched it when it was on TV back in the day. And the tornado scene, I just watched that, what, last week or the week before? And that occurred in season four. It was season four, episode nine, I believe. And the tornado hits Wisteria Lane, and it completely destroys. Um, um, Karen McCluskey's house and F3 damage. But some the other homes either have windows broken. Bree's house has a section of the roof torn off. 
but there is so much debris generated in the streets, but everything else other than Karen McCluskey's house is relatively intact. And if you look up Desperate Housewives Tornado, you can see a picture from, and again, we're not going to show just because we don't want to get risk copy, the copyright strike, but Tyler, you can look it up and you guys can look it up too. It, there's so much debris, yet so little damage. So they they either get it wrong that way or there's supposed to be so much damage, but there's so little debris. And not in the sense that the debris was granulated, like you've seen violent tornadoes. There's just nothing. I mean, Twister got it right with most of the scenes, Wakita, the barn, all that stuff. I'm, but guess me, I will be gushing about all the damage stuff in Twister. I have a lot to say, so go on. So, let's see, we've been talking now for a half an hour, 40 minutes going on. So, we okay. either need to speed up all this fluff or just get right into Twister. Well, let's just. I didn't think we could, I didn't think we could talk this much about 20 movies, to be honest. But we've also went on some tangents, so. Yeah, we have. I think we just, can we're we going to get hate mail for that. Can we just briefly crap on into the storm real quick? Let's briefly crap on every single tornado movie ever on the sci-fi channel. That was not tornado or twister. I don't even think tornado was on the sci-fi channel or twister was on the sci-fi channel. You got stone natos, which is about a tornado made out of rocks that hits Boston. You got never heard New York that. city tornado terror. You got metal tornado. You got ice twisters. You got all these just horrible movies. The acting is horrible. The CGI is horrible. Everything about it is horrible. And they were all on the Sci-Fi Channel. And they weren't these like Sharknado that were purposely made to be to be bad. I mean, they're gonna be bad being on Sci-Fi Channel, but they they, they were supposed crazy. to be more serious movies than Sharknado. Mm -hmm. But they're just everything about it is just horrible, horrible. Yeah, I agree. Um, so, into the storm. Let's 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 move on to into the storm. Into the storm came out. I actually went to the movies opening day. I went that. to the midnight premiere. <laughs> I did not get the midnight premiere, but um, maybe it was like the eight o'clock eight o'clock premiere the night before. We went. I'm not exactly sure what day it was, but I remember because we went to the afternoon one. It was like a Sunday afternoon, I think, or Saturday afternoon, because my parents took me. And then we went afterward to Best Buy, and I bought a Dyson vacuum there because I wanted to buy a Dyson vacuum. And But I remember going to the movie to see Into the Storm, and I wanted to like it so bad. And I do – I don't want to say I hate it, but – I was expecting it to be almost a Twister too, and it just didn't. It did not live up to Twister at all, in my opinion. See, for me, I have a very complicated relationship with Into the Storm because I know if you follow me on social media or whatever, y'all know I crap on this movie a lot. But and I say it's the bane of my existence, and I hate it. But there's some days where I don't hate it quite as much as I think I do. Um, when I saw the movie, I went to the movie theater, like I said, with some of my mm -hmm. storm chasing friends. And I loved it when I saw it in theaters. I was eating it like candy. I loved it. Um, I think I was more excited to see tornadoes on the big screen for the first time because I've never seen that before. See, that, that's that's what I liked. I liked that. And although a lot of like the just the action scenes are just absolutely cringeworthy, they were still good action scenes. Yeah. Um, and I feel like the movie would have been so much better if we got rid of the family of the dad and his two sons. Yeah. We just and ripped all that out. That that whole scene, like I said, not even the, just the scene where they're in that, that abandoned factory that got hit by the tornado. Just that whole scene with them being together and then him and that girl, that, that just was not necessary at all. Yeah. In my opinion. Like, yeah, we could have done away with a lot of that stuff. Um, yeah, I think the acting's pretty bad all around in that film, especially with the family. Um, 
It's the oh, same. Okay, so what? Now, now you're crapping on Nathan Press. Yes. Like Freddie on iCarly. Come on. Yes, I am. How can you hate on Freddie? <laughs> because he's not a good actor in this movie. <laughs> Sorry, but he's not. Um, what was I was going to say. It's basically a two hour long episode of Storm Chasers off the Discovery Channel. Um, except yes, that. I- <laughs> that is a good way. I never thought I never thought of it that way. But even the the vehicle they drive into the tornadoes, it's a complete rip off of the tip. Yeah. For now sure. I, I mean, wonder. I wonder if they worked with Sean Casey or even with Reed Timmer because Reed has the Dominators. I don't even know if he still has the Actually, Dominators. You know what? Reed Timmer was uh, an endorsement on the film. Um, okay. He, you know what I do because he, he I remember seeing on Facebook because he was posting it being at the red carpet premiere for that. Yeah, he was at the premiere and also he was on. Um, it's only on the Blu-ray, but there's a a featurette that he's on on the DVD for it. Now I have the Blu-ray. I'm gonna have to whenever I'm home over Thanksgiving break in a couple of weeks. I'm gonna have to walk and see if I. I'm gonna have to find my Blu-ray player because I don't even know what happened to that. I'm a digital guy now. I don't know. I have all these tornado DVDs and I have Blu-rays and stuff. I don't even have anything. I just pulled up my iPad and stream it to the Apple TV anymore. That's what I do. So I'm going to have to see see that. For, um, I think why Reed Timmer was so heavily involved was because the movie was originally called Black Sky. Um, really? Yeah. And Reed Timmer has his book called into the storm which i'm showing right now um love that book that is a great book i actually haven't read it yet but it is, <laughs> i read that it is autographed when did that book come when did that book come out um because i'm trying to think when i read it 2010 okay so i would have been i read that in ninth grade then so, Eighth or ninth grade is when I read it, and I love that book. I'm gonna have to reread it because it is a great book. So I think they wanted to use the name um, "Into the Storm." I guess if Reed promised to endorse the film or something. Um, That's interesting. I do not know that. And another thing that bothers me of the director and the cast talking about the film and I'm already annoyed because everyone keeps in the audience is saying it's so much better than Twister, which I don't know if they saw the same movie as I did. Um, but, um, they say blatantly that they used YouTube as their reference for tornadoes. They didn't talk to any meteorologists. They didn't interview any storm chasers. They literally just used HD YouTube. For their research. Now, in Twister, and this is on, I don't know if it's on the DVD, but I know it's on the Blu-ray of Twister, and it's been years since I've watched this part, but they have some bonus features on the Blu-ray, and one of them is an interview with Yon Bont mm-hmm. and some of the other um, people who were the directors and all, all of them, whatever you want to call them, the, doing it. They were, they did talk to meteorologists, and they did to, to to get tornado motion stuff like that they actually well i mean there wasn't youtube in 1994 whenever they were working on this movie but they actually did consult with meteorologists to do this they talked to a lot of meteorologists yeah i think i read yeah, and it, talk, it talks about, about that in the thing i think i read somewhere that there was about 30 meteorologists that were involved in the movie um However, I guess we'll t- no no I'll save that for when we talk about Twister. But um, okay, yeah. But my issue that was my big issue is yes, YouTube is a good source, but I feel like you need someone who actually understands the concepts of uh, tornado behavior because you're a not lot of those tornadoes in- were just really. Some of them looked good, like the one scene where it was the stovepipe tornado that hits the barn, and they captured by the television helicopter. It was towards the beginning of the movie, and that was a good scene. See, I think tornado me, was. 
what bothers me about that tornado is the debris cloud is moving so much faster than the funnel and I can't unsee it and it bothers it? me. Yes, you'll have to go watch that scene. I'll have to and well, then I'm gonna have to rewatch every single one of these movies we're talking about just because but yeah, it bothers it's, been, me that the it's been a while since I've watched them. Yeah, but it bothers me that the debris cloud's moving so much faster than I hate the scene with the triple tornadoes. Let's just, because I know you hate that scene too. Let's just talk about that I scene. Hate the entire scene. I only hate one specific part. Okay, what's 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 the part you hate about it? The fire tornado. Before we get to the fire tornado, and it was one I was just showing you on my phone before we started recording. The scene where the van is literally two feet in front of the tornado and it does not get sucked into it. That, no, I'm sorry. And the tornado is tearing up the road too. So this is a violent, even though it's five feet wide or 10 feet wide, it's a violent tornado. It's ripping up the road, which is something that I know in our Discord, on the Tornado Talk Discord, we've talked about how a lot of the more intense EF5 tornadoes have scoured the road and stuff like that. Yeah. The van is literally two feet in front of it, if not closer, and it's not sucked into it, or the window's not blown out by debris. I hate that part. And then the van crashes and flips over. It's like, not because of the tornado, just because they're driving erratically to get away from the tornado. I hate that. And then the whole part with the fire tornado, just that... I just, because the, just after sigh. the tornado passes the thing that's on fire, the tornado is still on fire, which would not happen in real life. Then, then it sucks up the cameraman. He's on fire inside of the fire tornado. It's just that whole scene. I hate that whole scene. Yeah. I, I don't have a lot to nitpick about that scene. I just know I hate it. I think it's yeah. trash. I think it should have never made it in the movie. Um. I'm sick that the people that made the film keep comparing it to an actual fire world, which is not the same thing as a tornadic tornado. Um, no, and that's when it comes to fire tornadoes. You have the fire world, which is more of a dust devil type thing, and then you have the thing which it's not. It's not as common as fire worlds, but it's. And I really want to do an episode on this pyro tornado genesis. It's what happened in 2018 in California during. Was it the car fire? That was July 27th, 26th or 27th, 2018. It was um, rated EF3, but it's not officially documented as a tornado when it should be. That's another rat hole. But Pyro Tornado Genesis is actually a tornado spawned by the Pyrocumulus or cum is a Pyrocumulonimbus mm -hmm. or Pyrocumulus, whatever it is. One of, one of those clouds. I'm sure we'll get email for not knowing what that is either. But it's not that I don't know. It's just I'm 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 on the spot right now. Um, so that's completely different than a fire whirl. So this tornado shut up, passed over the thing, sucked the fire up. The fire spun around it, but then as it moved away from the burning spot, was it a petroleum tank or a trucker? What was yeah. it that was on fire? It was a. It was a uh, an oil tank. Okay. Okay. That was something like that. Yeah. Which I think they stole from Twister also. <laughs> Although they didn't steal whole scenes from Twister. <laughs> In one of the movies. Um, it's called Devil Devil Wind, which I thought this one was the one with the with the gypsies. It which it's not. That one is which one is that? Tyler? Okay. But Devil One, because well, in, in the one that one with the gypsies, it talks about the um, how the tornadoes and or like the the creations of the devil or something like that, but like Romanian mythology or whatever. It's but so like I thought Devil Wind or something, right? Yeah, yeah, it was, it was some some something weird like that. But Devil Wind is not. I watched it recently, and but I within the past year on YouTube. But I thought Devil Wind, because it's free it is free to watch on YouTube, the actual video, not just some shoddy copy that someone uploaded that gets taken down once a month. It's the actual things on YouTube videos for free to watch or YouTube movies for free to watch. And there's a scene I didn't realize it 
when I watched it about a year ago, but Tyler pointed it out today. And I, so I pulled it up on my phone. I, I scrolled through and sure enough, it's a scene, the scene where they're driving through Wakita after the F4 hits on their way to Aunt Meg's house. And <laughs> you can see the van that has the tornado paint on the side, although you don't see the tornado painted on the side of it. They they either took that out or that was something added no, to the van. Weird. It didn't? No, it showed it. No, oh, because I, I wasn't paying attention. But you can see that. Um, what What's the guy who gets the, the gash on his head in Twister? Preacher. Yeah, Preacher. I thought it was Reverend. It was Preacher, yeah. Something <laughs> like that. Um, you can see his SUV or his station wagon, and then you see Dusty's uh, bus behind that. Barn and then, burner. yes, the barn burner. <laughs> and then you see um, Bill's truck, the red Dodge, with Toto in the back of it. Yes. But what 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 you do see in this, and this is probably how they got away with this, is that um, you can see the camera crew on the thing. So they probably stole this right from Twister's um, B-roll before any of the editing and anything and just slapped it into their thing. But also, um, in the beginning of that film of Devil Winds, um, there's this family uh, and and it shows the damage after and it's actually B-roll from Joe's family's house when it was hit by the F5 tornado at the beginning of the film. It's just different helicopter shots of it. And the only reason why I can tell is because, one, I, I'm i Twister obsessed. So I, I just... The, the tree. tree big and, the tree was the well, exact also, same you'll tree. Also, you see um, the cellar and you see Joe. Dad now I was and Joe standing there. Now I wasn't paying that close attention yeah. to it, but that tree was definitely the same tree. I'm gonna have to rewatch it when we're done here. Uh, just talk for a oh. second because I actually have a photo of it because I have the pack of the Twister trading cards. Okay. Oh. I didn't even know that was a thing. It's actually right here. I don't know if y'all can see it. That's exactly yeah, the same. That is the exact That's exactly yeah. it. Yes. Yeah. By the way, if you don't own the Twister training cards, you should get them. They're pretty cool. Where can you get them? I'm gonna look eBay. right now. eBay? I actually have I have two uh unopened packs. Well you, you know you should sell. I actually I have a friend of mine, she has a whole box of them. So I'll Jesus Christ. You know I can see if we can maybe get some for a giveaway or something if we get followers. Yeah, I better win that giveaway. Uh-huh. I said I better win that giveaway. <laughs> you can't win your own giveaway. Oh, I'm winning the I'm winning the giveaway. <laughs> okay. Um here. I'm looking. They there's Oh. <laughs> It's just a Twister trading card. It's not the actual card set. I mean, I... For $6. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So these are obviously hard to find nowadays. Yeah. But... I think, Nick, I I could probably get you a couple of packs. I think. That would be great. Now, we're talking about Twister. Should we just I feel like right every into- single thing we've talked about has gone right back to Twister, and we haven't well, even talked about Twister yet. It's because Twister's so great. <laughs> it's the ultimate tornado movie. It's the ultimate Twister movie, right? That's why it's called Twister. It's literally the only tornado movie. In my, in my eyes, Twister sets the bar well, for everything. It is my favorite. Let me adjust my camera again. It, it's my favorite movie. It, all, it always has been. Wow, I should take that back. Wizard of Oz was because that's what got me. Most people got into Twister because, or most people got into meteorology and tornadoes and storm chasing because of Twister. I got into it from Wizard of Oz. And then my grandmother bought me 
the Twister VHS. This was when I was two or three years old because I like became instantly fascinated by the tornadoes after seeing the tornado scene in the Wizard of Oz. Which but, I which I still think is the most realistic looking tornado. It ever. is. And you know what they used for that? A windsock. Yes. If you look on YouTube, and I will link this, I'm definitely going to link this YouTube video when we upload this. The tornado I actually test. have it saved in my favorites. Yes, it's, um, let me see what it's called. The tornado yeah, tests are so cool, guys. And so. what's great, this was in 1938 or 39, before they had the understanding of how tornadoes work. There's the RFD. There's yep. the clear slot. There's these yep. things. I mean... People in Kansas know what, well, they didn't know what they were called back then. They, we didn't have terms for them, but they knew how stuff like this worked. It, it was just amazing. Yes. It was, it's just amazing. Even just like the elegant swaying back and forth is just so mm -hmm. realistic. It's very realistic. I can't find, I can't find my favorites right now. I'm not going to worry about it, but we will definitely link that down below. Yeah, I still think that's the best tornado in any It's film. not CGI at all. They no, literally I use think it. That's to... why. It's because it looks like an actual thing, you know? Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, it's just that that scene is, is great. And it used to so scare we'll... people a lot. Just because, I guess, no, one's, no one had ever seen anything like it before. Um, and it looked real. I think they ended mm -hmm. up using it, using the tornado footage, a different, a couple of different times after the Wizard of Oz. And several yeah, years. I know there's a movie in 19, it was either 1941 or 1943. I don't know what it's called or what it's about, but it popped up in the recommended videos after watching that. So I obviously mm -hmm. clicked on it and they show there's like a party or something going on and like a class, not not like a party like how, how we have nowadays, like a bunch of people listening to hip-hop music. It's like one of these formal, like, dinner party type things. Mm -hmm. And they say there's a tornado or there's a twist or whatever coming. There's and they it's the same. Movie. Yeah, and then it's the same same scene from, from The Wizard of Oz. They reuse it there. Um, but let's now get into, is there anything... Now we've been talking about Twister for how for many minutes, and now Wizard yeah. of Oz. Is there any last thing that you have to say about Into the Storm? Since we've been off of that topic, that's the topic we're supposed to be talking about. Since we've yeah, been off of that for, um, brief, just to wrap up Into the Storm. Uh, I think it had some potential, and I think some of the scenes. And are we are at an hour now, so this is going to run on. This is going to be a little bit of a longer episode, so. I'll make sure to put down in the show notes that this is more of a ranting episode, more so than last week. <laughs> um, so people know it's just an hour, just these side tangents. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, I hey, think, this is what I love. I, I love this kind of stuff, though. I love rambling on for hours, even though I other know, people are just going to get annoyed by us. Yeah. I think. Oh, well. Unless you're into no one's tornadoes, you're not to gonna it. you're not gonna get it. So yeah, it's just the way it is. Um, but even if you aren't into tornadoes, who in their right mind is gonna sit down for an hour and a half and listen to the two of us just ramble on and go into however many side tangents for? True. Um, Although I do like that in podcasts. I'm not gonna lie. I I just I don't know. I enjoy that because that's who I am as a person. Because every single one of my conversations just ends up going somewhere it shouldn't, just because of how I am and how my friends are. Right. Maybe we all have ADD or ADHD, <laughs> but <laughs> maybe. Okay, I don't so know. But just to wrap up into the storm. Um, I think the EF5 at the end was okay. Uh, there, I like the airport scene. Yes. Um, I think that's I did the too. best scene of the movie. And I like the part, um, the planes do start to disintegrate when they're getting lifted up. It's yeah. not like the fact where they actually, because if a tornado like that actually does hit an airport, which we almost had that in Kansas this past year, the Lawrence tornado dropped debris down the Kansas City airport, but this was after it already lifted. And 
I know there's been a couple other tornadoes. I know there was one in 2012 that in EF zero that roped out over um, the Baltimore Washington airport and stuff like that. So there's been many close calls, but we've never had a direct that I know of of a recently of a violent EF four EF five tornado making a direct strike on an airport. But I like that they show that the planes break apart because that is what would happen. Yeah. If a tornado of that magnitude struck an airport. Um, St. Louis airport got hit in 2011. It was only an EF-1 or an EF-2 as it passed through the airport. I don't know if it damaged any. Was it not? It was EF-4 to two houses. Okay, okay. It was very minimal EF-4. The airport was either EF-1 or EF-2, but it did blow out windows in the concourse and throw around luggage bags. I don't know if it struck any airplanes, though. Actually, um, also, I have the old Fujita scale posters back here. And right here, yeah, here is, yeah, is the Fresno, California airport getting ripped apart by an F1 tornado. The roof is getting blown. Yes, yes, and that picture's also in. Now I don't have those posters, and I'm totally jealous because I want those posters. I've always wanted them. We have them here at Cal in the Meteorology Lab, and I might t- tomorrow when I have my conference call with Dr. Kaufman, ask him if I could take them for safekeeping while they remodel the science building. Right. <laughs> because they're, right. we're losing access to the entire building. Even though it's the newest building on campus, they're remodeling it again. So we can completely lose all access to it next semester, which sucks because like a, a lot of like our science related classes, like we're, I don't know how we're going to be able to have our labs or stuff because we're going to lose actual access to labs. Yeah. lab rooms so i don't know but yeah that picture is also in significant tornadoes which i know we, we we're fans of that book and i know jen she'll be watching this show she, she uses that book a lot we're, we're big me and tyler are big thomas grizzulis fanboys let's just be honest <laughs> he's, he's finding his right now see i'm not in my room so i don't have mine i i moved down to the one study hall just because my roommate's in the room this book is 1500 pages it's very thick it's heavy you could kill a person with it if you throw it at them the final page count is 1325 yes it is and great he's actually updating this it hasn't been updated since 1993 95 95 because he had them that goes to 91 and then there's the 1992 to 95 version that you don't have well i don't have that one it's literally the size of this iPad, it, even the same thickness, very, it's, it's not, a, not like that. It's just, it's, it's an update. It's just a small addition to it, but right. it was like $5 on Amazon like a year ago. Now it's like $50 because yeah. they're out of print. The price is just based on demand because there's been times where significant tornadoes has been as high as used six ninety nine, and then I got mine when I needed to get a new copy because mine fell apart. I got it for 99 because it was at a time where it wasn't actually being bought very frequent frequently right but what were we talking about we're about to start talking about twist the airport scene so oh that's right yeah <laughs> yeah so, basically, so i like that I enjoy. That's, that's a real that's a pretty realistic scene and i do like the the rope out of the f5 i like that too i don't remember that scene now at the end, and this was something we were talking about, they show um, helicopter footage, and I thought, I could have swore it was from more. According to IMDB, it's real tornado damage footage from a news helicopter. I We thought it was from the 2013 more tornado. According to IMDB, it's, based, it, it's, the, it's damage from Joplin in 2011. But Tyler, you said they had the audio, and it's the guy from more the jim jim gardner who pilots the helicopter the sky nine yeah for sky nine. Channel 4. i think okay. it's sky nine um yeah I could be wrong i think it's sky nine. that's that's gary england's old station he's retired but yeah and yeah. it's actually his audio talking about the more tornadoes that as he was witnessing it from the helicopter um and the rope out and I think Nick said he doesn't remember this part, but the rope out is literally a copy of the rope out of the Moore tornado from Jim Gardner's footage. So, and that's why I think it's based more off of Moore than Joplin, but I, 
I could be wrong about that. Though. And more was the more recent one. I mean, they started getting this. I think they started filming in 2012. Yeah. But they finished it up in 2013, 2014. Then it came out August 2014. So, but I'm, I'm pretty sure it was more. But IMDb in the trivia section says it's Joplin, and I tried finding this scene on YouTube, and and, and just the short time I couldn't. I'm sure if, if I have more time, I'll be able to find it. But I, I want to say it's it's more. Which I, is cool. I, that I apparently am writing, not to change the subject, I have a conference on Friday. I am apparently supposed to ride in the trunk of the car, according to the president, Liz. <laughs> That's how she treats her vice president. I'm the vice president. She's right. going to make me ride in the trunk, right? Okay. So now on to, as we approach an hour and eight minutes, Okay, we we should just stop and just get to Twister, because <laughs> that might yes. take a long time to talk about anyway. Because so we're gonna have to have a part one, a part one, and a part, part two. two. <laughs> now let's we'll just make this one long podcast, and people can it just piss everyone off. Yeah, I I mean I like long. I I know I know. Tomorrow, I'm gonna get a message from my friend Alex. Just some constructive criticism. <laughs> your podcast was way too long. You should have just edited out all of your tangents. But that's what's going to make this podcast our podcast is our tangents. What? That's what we should call the podcast Tornado Tangent. Ah, there. Is it too late? Hey, why didn't we think of that beforehand? I know. Is it too late? on Twitter and see if we should rename the podcast to the Tornado like Tangent tornado because it's tangents. what every single I know and that's what it is because we just go on these random tangents <laughs> about nothing I mean, a lot of them don't even pertain I mean, to what's going what on <laughs> I mean I'm not gonna I'm not gonna think too hard about it but anyway so, I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna tweet that out right now <laughs> I'm I'm a star. Okay, so do we need it? A- okay, I'm gonna put, put put my phone on speaker. I feel weird saying that because I shouldn't be using my phone. But we've been that phone. I'm dialed in on a call. The thing is work, so I'm listening to Tyler through my phone. And the audio you guys are hearing, I hope it's not bad. We did a test and didn't sound too bad. It is just using my phone microphone. So I'll try not to talk that much because I'm sure on speaker it sounds horrible. And I'm tweeting that out. Okay, so I don't even we even need to introduce Twister at this point. I feel like we can just go right. It's uh, our favorite movie. I'm sure it's our favorite movie. I'm sure I have a Twister tattoo. See, it's a, I'll go ahead and show it. It's the sensor. Oh, that's cool. And it says, it, it's the one. Oh, it's like the Twister, the, the same oh, text font. Yeah, I, I love I that. Know. That's awesome. And actually, no. um, I, I'm getting a big Twister piece here. That like, is so great. Much no, I, like this movie. I don't have, let me hold my phone closer so you can hear me better. I don't have any tattoos right now. My first tattoo, I'll be getting one within the next month or two. It's going to be actually hold it up to my keychain. It's going to be that. That's called the Death Bat. That's loaded to my favorite band of Adam Sevenfold. So that's going to be my first tattoo. But down the line, I will have some form of a tornado on my body. Yeah. Um... Might, not, might not be something from Twister, but I'm probably going to have a tornado tattoo of some sorts but it's like my my love of twister is almost like a religious just because i owe so much to that movie um i actually have a 20 no it's a 30 minute review 
channel. I'll link that in the description too. Um, basically, it, okay, so I saw Twister when I was two. Uh, my parents bought it on VHS, and I don't know why I ended up watching it. I guess my, my parents really loved it originally. Now they don't really care for it because they've seen it hundreds of times with me. But uh, they really liked it, and I guess I happened to watch it one day and was just like, wow, um, that's so cool. And then I ended up uh, getting some documentaries because uh, I guess I was being inquisitive about tornadoes and my parents didn't really know how to answer that. Any questions about tornadoes? So I got some National Geographic documentaries. One was Nature's Fury, which is still a phenomenal documentary, and Cyclone. I remember renting that from not Family Video. What was the other video store that was popular back in the day? Blockbuster? Not Blockbuster. Um, it's not important. It's about, I remember going down. <laughs> it's the source of family video now. Actually, the family video is now a, a yoga studio, this one. But uh -huh. it was um, it, it was something else, um, something movie. The movie was in the name. I don't know. But I remember renting that from the but it didn't work, and I was mad because it didn't play in our VHS no. player. Yeah. I'm really hoping, because um, Disney Plus is about to come out with their streaming service, and yeah. they own Natural Geographic, and that's one of their portions. I'm a big Disney fan, so I'm buying Disney Plus. Um, I'm, See, really I'm not. So. I mean, I shouldn't say I'm not a Disney fan, but it wouldn't be worth it for me. Just because but I'm hoping all those older documentaries are going to be on there um, because they said the entire library of everything will be on there. So I'm hoping. Yeah, and there's a, there's a lot of good documentaries that were on yeah. that Geo that you can't find. I know there was one at, about a tornado hitting Dallas and it went yeah. more and you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. And it, it there's another one I know. It showed it was like an F, a stimulated F two tornado hitting hitting a, a city, and there there were there were a lot that were on back back in the day. I didn't know a lot of the TLC ones are now on YouTube. Yeah, um, which we've talked about in the Tornado Talk Discord. Mm -hmm. But yeah, a lot of those Nat Geo ones, if they're on there. I if there's a free trial, I will definitely sign up for the free trial just to rewatch them. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, getting back to Twister. So basically, <laughs> another tangent. Another, another tangent. tornado tangent. So Twister got me onto watching tornado videos, and I remember my what solidified tornadoes for me after Twister was seeing uh, footage from the Heston, Kansas F5 tornado. It's a very classic tornado home video um that's been around and used in yeah. everything um it's still one of my favorite home videos of all time um and still to this day it's a very great video now which one are you talking about because there's two standout videos from heston and they're both amazing videos are you talking about the one where it's plowing into town and you can see it lofting like the big powder of concrete from the factory that one yes okay Yes, yeah. and then there's another one with it when the Heston tornado is roping out and then it gets sucked into the ghost cell tornado. Uh -huh. That's another great video. And they're both, they were, it was 1990, but the videos are very high quality. Yeah, and you can, like, what's really amazing about the Heston video is the one that I'm talking about, is you can see how, just how violent that tornado was. Um, the, inflow, mm -hmm. the rear inflow jet was coming in all the way from maybe a good quarter mile away from the tornado. I could be exaggerating, but I feel like it was a pretty long inflow jet. Um, yeah. And it, just so much debris. It was insane. Um, it pretty much went right through the middle of town. So, um, what is that five damage? 
several large wild homes were swept away. Mm-hmm. And you had your classical F5 damage around scouring and stuff like that. And that's actually why the second tornado, the ghost cell tornado, although it didn't hit as much, Dr. Fujita said that that one was more violent based on the ground scouring and the cycloid prints it left in the ground. It was the most intense ground scouring he had ever seen. So. Yes, and that was one of a few tornadoes that he talked about possibly going F6. Because yeah. that's one of the things he said in his actual memoir, which you can read on there's a website from the Chicago whatever university he worked for. They have all of his papers and stuff that you can read online. They're PDF files. His mem- memoir, which he wrote back, I want to say 92 or 93, it's like it's 100 and some or 200 pages long. It's worth the read. Um, he does talk about one of the ways to possibly achieve an F6 rating, because when's the F6 range at ground level, would be based on the, cyc- the, the cyclone prints it leaves in the, on the ground. And that one was one of the most intense um, in terms of the well, – not, they're not called cyclone. What is it? Cy- Cycl- Cycloid? Cyclonio. Is that- Cyclodal. Cyclodal, okay. Cyclodal ground marking. Yes. Yeah. That fancy term. But yeah, that's how he said an F6 rating could be achieved as based on based on that. Okay. Now that that tangent's over. <laughs> we're horrible. <laughs> we're we're up to an hour and eighteen minutes. God, people are gonna hate us now. We're the, we lost all of our viewership. Okay, so I, we're, we've just been rambling forever, so I'm going to try and... Bro- tornado movies have maybe been maybe 20 minutes out of all the dancing. <laughs> like actual tornado movies that we were supposed to talk about. I think... Okay, <laughs> going back to Twister, I love all the characters. I love... My favorite character personally is Joe. Um, I just... I love... So my- I had... I'm just going to be completely honest. Four-year-old Nick had a major crush on Joe. Everyone did. Like, 1996, Helen Hunt. Pretty good looking. Yeah. Um, I just, I don't know. I I just found her very intriguing. She's a very intriguing character. Um, and I, I feel like people say Bill Paxton carries the film, and he does to a degree. But I feel like Helen Hunt really carried the film for me. Um, because I have empathy, so I understand why she does what she does. And I, of course, we're all, and if you're listening to this podcast, you can probably relate to her with the obsession level. Um, because I feel like we're all pretty obsessed with tornadoes. Um, just it's kind of, it's really hard to explain why exactly. I don't think anyone's ever put it into words, really. Um, it's just something that we're all connected by. Well, I feel weird when I say I love tornadoes, and tornadoes are my favorite weather, because it kind of sounds It's morbid. To say it's that. Yeah, it is. But it's not that I love the death and destruction, although right. I find the destruction they cause fascinating to study, whether it's in person or like we did in the last podcast and our future podcast episodes where we're going to – study the damage photos I that's what I just I it's fascinating and that's what now I don't know if you I've gone on my own tornado damage surveys and they've been tornadoes here in Pennsylvania at zeros and f1s and two two of them were actually never officially confirmed although occurring everything matched up and the damage was convergent and there was a tornado warning that was a supercell and there were funnel cloud reports and I actually took a picture of the one funnel Cloud and but it's just fascinating because even weeks tornadoes something there's some type of damage to even if it's just one point of damage that that just makes you step back and like wow that's weird like this one it happened May 30th 2017 near Alexandria Pennsylvania not officially confirmed but bark from the one tree was blown 300 yards opposite of the direction of storm movement wrapped around another tree. Wow. I just thought that was, yeah, and I gave the tornado an EF zero rating, which one's damage was probably 70 to 80 miles per hour from what I was seeing along the path. 
Mm-hmm. But I just thought that was something that, that just stuck out to me as being weird. And there's every single one you you look at the damage, whether it's weak like that or a violence where it is that does something like loft parking stops. I I guess it's just morbid to say I love tornadoes and but it's fascinating to it whether is. it's the tornado itself or the damage it causes. There's uh, there's every new tornado video, there's something different and something fascinating about it. Yeah, agreed. Um, and especially now with the rise of social media and even like the, now the ring doorbells, like the one in New York, um, near Buffalo, New York in 2017 caught the one. It was like a, a two foot wide suction vortex. And then the other angle from the camera in the front, you see the, the car and the flatbed trailer lifted up and rotated and set back down like i mean you're just getting all all kinds of fascinating things that are happening and caught capture on video nowadays which it's, it's it's incredible to watch it's like it's funny because the first major tornado scene that we have in twister um joe and bill are taking cover under that bridge in the ditch yeah and Joe wants to look at it. So she's like wanting to stand up and look at it. I'm just going to be completely honest. I can totally relate to Joe. I'm the person who runs outside during severe thunderstorm and tornado warnings and looks for it. I stand on my pool deck and I have an above ground swimming pool with a 30 foot tree beside the pool, a 50 foot tree about 200 feet away from me, um, behind me in my front yard. There's a a 300 foot tall cell phone tower two blocks away on the top of the hill and i go outside during the lightning because i don't care i love yeah. it so yeah. I, I i can totally relate to joe wanting to see it i don't she's yelling, know. i want to see it that's me and my mom my mom's like get in the house it's getting bad out there and i don't know if i was in that situation if i would have been as entranced as joe is but now yeah, that, to an extent, I when it's getting that close, then that's when it's the oh crap moment hits. Because again, what, let's go back to the lightning analogy I made. That happened August 2nd this past summer. Let me, I'm doing this, so because I don't know how the audio is going to sound. I'm just, it's not getting, because, because, <laughs> okay, so I think that, the, this thing, instead of calling it tornado movies, it's going to be tornado movies and other miscellaneous tangents because that's really what it's been. Yeah. Which, this is exactly how I pic- pictured this podcast going just because I knew exactly how it was going to go and this is exactly how I pictured it and I love it. Mm-hmm. That doesn't mean other people are going to like it, but this is exactly how I pictured it going. Yeah. So I'm, I'm okay with it. But <laughs> um, the lightning was nonstop for about an hour. So basically what happened was several thunderstorms there was no steering at all, and it was a general day here. And I was talking to um, Jared Radcliffe from the National Weather Service in Pittsburgh when I just visited about a month ago, and I told him about this, and he's like, "Oh yeah, your your classic general days because the storms produced a lot of wind damage and major flooding. But basically, right. what happened? You got there were three separate storms. One moved north. One moved west." one moved south and they all converged on each other and just stalled out for about two hours and the lightning i've never been in a storm like this with lightning i was scared i was scared it was shaking the house the thunder was so loud it was shaking the house it wasn't even thunder it was just booms i could smell lightning struck the neighbor's house i could smell the smoke from the neighbor's house it just the whole everything about it was scary and then my basement and we have a finished basement flooded bad like we normally get some water in the basement we had about a foot of water in the finished part of the basement it, it was bad this whole everything just everything about the storm scared me yeah so like it's wanting to see it but wanting to see it turns into fear at a certain point yeah. and i think the point where it would turn into fear for me being under that bridge with them is when the mud starts to fly well what about the board ripping off? <laughs> what I think is funny is that's my, um, it's a tie because my two favorite scenes from Twister are that first tornado scene 
because it's really over the top and mm -hmm. awesome. Um, and the entire, literally the entire F5 sequence from beginning yeah. to end is epic. Now, about that first scene, I, I do have some quiggles about it. Yeah, I do um, too. So that is because each tornado gets stronger in strength as the movie goes on. So the first tornado is supposed to be the F1. But, however, the damage it causes, the That's way it levels that barn, that, that, is, that is F2 damage. The way it lifts, and again, an F1 tornado can roll a truck over like that. It literally lifts the car so f high up that after the tornado lifts, the, the whole where's my truck scene, and then it comes crashing down. I don't even think an F5 tornado would do that because it got lifted so far up. Yeah. And out of sight and then crashes back down. Maybe I could understand that maybe in the F5 scene, but I know how vehicles interact in tornadoes with that strength. Well, I mean, that also. The furthest kind of, reliable documented, documentation of vehicle movement is roughly a mile. And the car doesn't end up looking intact like that and getting smashed down the road. They're shredded and mangled balls at that point. Yeah. So that's that's an issue I have with that scene. But also, it's a great scene. It is a great scene, but I just have an issue with that part. But also when it uh, when the tractor gets thrown and you see Melissa drive by, yeah. it, it's a, it threw that tractor a pretty good distance away from. Yeah, the bridge. and that's something. It takes you a violent tornado. Tractors are very solid, and they're harder to move than a regular car, just based on studying the tornado damage. Yeah. Um, that happened, um, what is it, Camp Crook, South Dakota last year? Was that the tornado? I don't know what exactly the town it was near, but it was in South Dakota. And Oh, no, no, you're, you're thinking in Minnesota. It was... N not Minnesota. It was either Montana or Wyoming. Montana, sorry. And sorry, then across it into... It was Montana. Sorry. Yeah. Um, and... It carried the, sh it completely shredded that tractor and threw it across the state line. Which I mean, all the news articles were saying tornado throws tractor into next state, which is obviously clickbaity, but it did throw it. it I, that was over. It was over a mile, and the the thing was shredded. It takes an intense tornado to do that. So just the whole vehicle lofting and then dropping well, down, without them being shredded or anything, in an F one tornado. Well, even when the grinds my gears as Peter Griffin even when the say. tornado blows through the barn um it it mm -hmm. rips up that barn with so much force that it's really mm -hmm. hard for me to consider that f1 damage because even though it's a computer generated barn I get it it looked like a pretty well-made barn as well um so an f one up the barn, a well-built barn, I should say, mm -hmm. and not across. not in the way, not in the way that that tornado, not in the way that tornado yeah. did. So I'm with you. And if you read, I, I'm sure you read the part about what constitutes F1 damage in Tom Grzulis's book. I'm sure you read that section in Significant Tornadoes. It talks about a well, a large, well-built barn being totally destroyed like that is F2 damage. Yeah. Even when you look now on the enhanced Vegeta scale, complete destruction of a large, well-built barn like that, estimated winds is 112 miles per hour. That's EF2. Right. I mean, I so, forget it because they don't call it an F1 in the movie. So it, for all intents and purposes, it's just up to interpretation. Um, but yeah. Yonder Barn did say he wanted it to be an F1 and then gradually get bigger as we went along. Yes, and even – and now I have I have Wikipedia pulled up, and I'm looking on, on the Twister. And even on the Wikipedia, they talk about um, Joe uh, finishing the paper, her work, and her team rushes to intercept the nearby forming F1 tornado, forcing Bill Melissa to chase after her. So – and then yeah. Yeah, each tornado, the next tornado, then – the the sidewinder mm -hmm. the one that one that they they say that's an f2 f3 maybe mm -hmm. and then when they're sitting there at aunt meg's house after going through everyone's favorite scene the water spouts 
cow. Another cow. Another cow. Actually, I think that actually was, I think that was the same one. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's what we say it at the same time. That's the most famous that, thing that, in, that, in the movie. That's even sure. people, even people who've seen Twister just one time, if you say that, they know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. It's an iconic. It's an iconic scene. It is. Realistic. No. Iconic. <laughs> very. Well, you're not going to well, see a reason. cow just going back and forth between water spouts. The reason why like that. the cow was added into the scene is because they were reading up on tornado damage and there was an instance of a tornado picking up a herd of cattle and putting it back down gently like 10 miles away from where they were picked up. I don't know if it was 10 miles. Maybe it was a little bit shorter than that. but I think it was a quarter of a mile. I know what you're talking about. But essentially, that's why they added the cow part into yeah. the movie. Well, just the way the cow, it would not just peacefully pass by like it did twice, just going between the two water spouts. That that part right there, just that isn't really going to happen in real life. I guess, yeah, because... It would have been, yeah. the cow would not have been mooing. The cow would have been dead. You know what? People, well, people and, and animals have survived in worse odds. That's than true. Cow. That's true. But they do say then, um, once they get to Aunt Meg's house, house, um, there's an F3 forming. Mm -hmm. So again, we're climbing up the scale. And look, now we're staying on the Twister tangent, which is great. I mean, that's the point, right? Yes. (laughs) We're only an hour and a half late getting to this point. (laughs) Wow. Okay. An hour and 33 minutes is how long I've been connected to this call. So, again, I'm okay with that. (laughs) But I know we're going to get a lot of hate mail for it. I don't think so. It'll be fine. I think so. I think we're going to get some hate mail for it. Uh, Oh, well. Go ahead. uh, Now, okay. So, going the Aunt Meg's the Aunt Meg, that, that, that whole scene, that's a pretty classic scene where they're sitting there eating steak and egg and that mm-hmm. every time I see that makes me hungry for steak and egg. I, know, so I love too. steak. Me too. And I know every diner I've go- gone to has steak and eggs on the menu, but I never get it because I always get either waffles or French toast because that's all that I get when I go to diners. But mm-hmm. <laughs> that that's a very classic scene. And then they're talking about the Fujita scale and then the all that stuff. Back. And then Jonas is on, yeah, the finger of God, which is what you wanted to, isn't that one of the names that no, got passed name, around? No, the name I tossed around was Respect the Wind, which is okay. the Van Halen. Yeah, like, that's the Van Halen the song. That's, yeah. But that's, yeah, reason. the finger of God, that's a... Uh, I would describe me. an F5 tornado. Yes. Which is pretty true. I mean... Oh, yeah. There's nothing left after one. Yeah. An empty slab. Mm. But then nowadays, that only gets rid of the F4. There's no such thing as an EF5 nowadays. <laughs> You're trying so hard not to say something. I know it. That's why I said that. I mean. <laughs> oh. Well, well, we're not going down that tangent. Go we're not. We're not. We're not, not, we're not go because we'll, we'll be on here for another four hours just if we just go down that tangent. You know our feelings. We talked about it last week. On and Rick we're going to talk about it so many more times. Okay. So we go to the then they go down and they're chasing through the they're driving through the corn and then they pull out and almost smack into Jonas's team. I love how all of Jonas's cars in the team are black, like just signifying they're the bad people. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> I don't know if you noticed that or not. No, I totally did. So, that, so then they pull out and almost crash into Jonas and then they get on the there there's the back and forth banter on the walkie talkies and then they're like, the, they're driving up. Then now they're there, the hilly area, and they're like, it's supposed to be here. And then you just see it, the the cone it was a very cone like classic funnel just dipping the down. Silence. Yes, and then it lifts back up, and then they're over there talking about the cone of silence, and they're Which showing the way, radar images on the tornadoes. Huh? Cones of silence had nothing to do with tornadoes. Just the way. No, that has to do with radar. But so again, there's one of those inaccuracies that are in there, and then they're up there, and probably either the RFD or the 
forward flank downdraft or something like that. They do say whenever Melissa says about being in the tornadoes, the guy, um, what's his face, says that they were just in a micro, they were in micro bursts up in the hill, but they're getting hit with the hail, which isn't even hail shaped. It's just they use chunks of ice and it's chunked of ice shape. It's not even shaped like real hail. And yeah, yeah hail sometimes has jaggers and odd shapes, but for the most part, it's round. Yeah. Or well, that's the best they could do back in 1995. That's true. I guess I shouldn't fault them too much on that, but still. Real quick, real but quick, going back to Into the Storm just for a second. <laughs> I do like their hill scene. Yeah. The scene is really good. Yes, it was. Very okay, realistic. Going back, going back to. <laughs> <laughs> no, back to. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> We're going to get through this, Nick. We'll get, we'll get through this. It might be four hours long, but we'll eventually get there. Better not be. I have to be up at 4 a.m. tomorrow. I know. Hey, I had to get up early today for work, and I was up until 3 in the morning because my neighbors were being noisy, so you can deal with it. Fine. <laughs> okay, yeah. Uh, so, anyway. And then the tornado keeps touching down and lifting off and touching down. And, yes, tornadoes do that. Not that dramatically, though. They don't do that as dramatically as seen in the movies. Well, I feel like what they were going for with that scene is more like what like what a multiple vortex tornado would do. I think that's kind of what they were going off of, but in the movie it's just the same tornado going up and down. But yeah. I think they were getting their You know, that is a good point. You don't really see multiple vortices and they, they don't show multiple vortices in the in Twister at all. No, but I think it's only because they weren't really that understood back then. Well, no. Scratch that, scratch that, scratch well, that. Well, multiple vortices, when you go back, they were talked about well back in the 1800s, although they didn't have a name until it was um, in the early 70s. I think not necessarily the super outbreak. I know Fujita studied them in in the Palm Sunday outbreak of 65. But then I think when he actually termed the mul- either multiple, vorte- multiple vortex or suction vortex or suction spot, because um, all those things were interchanged, I think that got coined after the super outbreak of 74, which was also when he termed um, downburst to microburst, which was actually one of his biggest accomplishments, which we should just have an entire episode dedicated to Dr. Fujita and what he did. Yeah, he's one of before my we go even he's one Before of my we even go further down that rat hole, but that I think that that came about in the uh, 1974 super outbreak because they were captured in Muncie, Indiana and Xenia. On, in Xenia on video yeah. clearly for the first time. They've been captured on photographs before irregularly like every once in a while but that that's when they were actually truly captured on video that they were clear enough to study actually i where fujita got his most of his information about section vortices was from the lubbock tornado actually um, really oh yeah. yeah 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 because there's that study 27 out of the 28 deaths or something like that occurred in a suction vortex exactly yeah yeah. Yeah. And the only reason I know that is because I live in Lubbock. And the tornado. Yeah, well, you know, the tornado. I a, did read about that, but that's something that slipped my mind because you can only hold so much tornado knowledge in your mind. Right. But he be- he was better able to understand how they worked from the super. Yes, after studying he was able the video. To see, see them in action for himself. Yes. Because the yes. poor guy, I think, only saw one tornado in his entire life. Yeah, and that was in 1983, I believe. It yeah, was in the 80s is, in yeah, Colorado. Someone should have took him chasing, <laughs> which is crazy to me. But Well, and that's what I know. He was flying through tornadic storms studying cloud tops and stuff. But, yeah, he just never actually studied tornadoes when they were in progress. Mm-hmm. Which is why he's he really was a – a big candidate for um, the videos that were coming out at the time. And that's why you put so much emphasis on studying them. And mm-hmm. that's where photogrammetry came out of was mm-hmm. from Dr. Fujita studying particles, 
debris, cloud tags, whatever, mm -hmm. and estimating wind speeds from there. But yeah, there's a whole section of that, and I want to say it's tornado uh, video project or um, tornado video classics. Yeah, it volume is. two. Yeah. And it works its way up from the Kona Hawaii water spout, where it's the tornado was actually rated F2, but the the wind speeds measured by photogrammetry are in the F2 range yeah. at 120 miles per hour. Then it works its way up to 160 in Salina, Kansas, and then 200 uh, all the way up to 284 in um, the Muncie tornado that we that I mentioned earlier in yeah. a suction vortex. And then now we've done photogram. Well, when I say we, I mean meteorologists have done photogrammetry on the Pampa tornado of '95 and measured wind speeds based on photogrammetry in the 300 mile per hour range. Which I believe it. That's in it. That that was a violent drill bit. Yeah, it was. I, I it went surprised me one bit, honestly. Um, and then so, comparing those to the other tornadoes that occurred later on that day which were equally if not more violent anyway oh yeah allison and kellerville but yeah back to twister <laughs> here's another tangent we need to go back and count how many tangents we went down this episode and how many tangents evolved from another tangent because that happened a couple times real quick i just because i know i'm going to forget this i want to talk about the f5c Sequence. Well, that's what I'm trying to work our way okay, up okay, there. Okay, get there, get there. We just, okay, so are we done talking about the F3, the part where a boat and a bike gets thrown at them? Yeah. Okay, and the whole scene about her father and they're standing there in the rain fighting and screaming. Okay, so now we're later in the evening and they're at the drive-in. Melissa's checked into the hotel room. They're over there. They're watching The Shining at the drive-in. Mm -hmm. Joe goes up and gets coffee. Bill goes up with her, but because this was after their fight, and then they're talking, they're like, "It's coming," and then Bill says, "It's already here." And as he says that, it ominously pans up, and you see the tornado starting to tear apart the driving screen, and everyone starts running for cover. And that's a that's a classic scene right there too. And buying into the the place they're sheltering in, and then. Uh, preacher gets slashed by a hubcap that flies by, and there's the hose that's whipping around, and just that whole scene is it's a great scene. And, and the the, the, the sparks the flying, yes, yeah, twice it flies in twice. Did you notice that? Yeah, I don't know if that was an accident or, but it, it flies in twice. Yeah, yeah, I um, think it's just an editing issue there, but. And and then after it moves through, they're all standing there, and then um, they say um, it's heading for Wakita, and then they all go to Aunt Meg's rescue, and they get to Wakita, and and this the scene with Wakita, which is fascinating, they actually destroyed Wakita for this. Well, to an extent, some of the buildings were abandoned buildings that they just tore down. Mm -hmm. And left it as rubble for the tornado. Other ones, they built false facades on the front, collapsed those false facades, and then used CGI for the rest of it to destroy the rest of the building. Yeah. But that that, that whole scene, that was the F4 tornado not... that hit the drive and then hit Wakita. And then they go to Aunt Meg and rescue Aunt Meg and uh, Moses. Moses is the dog, right? Is it yeah, okay, Moe's. Wait, wait, wait. Is it Moe's or is it Moe's or Moses? Bolts. It's Bolts. Okay, so it's Moses, but they call Moe's sometimes. No, Bolts. No. Yes. <laughs> Maybe it's Moe's. I'm Googling Aunt Meg's dog right now. <laughs> <laughs> You know, someone's yelling at us. It's neither of it. It's neither of those names. They're probably going like, we don't care. Just end, just end your damn podcast already. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. What is Aunt Meg's dog's name? It's Moe's. M-O-S-E. Moe's. Okay, so it is Moe's. Yeah, okay. So, 
they they take Mo's with them. Aunt Meg goes to the hospital. She says she's fine. She, they tell her her car's in the tree around the block, which in an F4 tornado, it's probably not an exaggeration. Right. So, I, I mean, he might have just said that just to be like, no, you're going. But By the we way, know how violent an F4 tornado is. I could do sure. that. By the way, Waukita is one of my favorite places in the entire world. I want to go there so bad. I want to go to the Twister Cafe and the Twister Museum. Uh huh. Yeah, just rub it in. Just keep rubbing it in. You see, I, I storm chase in I Pennsylvania, need- and then last week I storm chase in Maryland and Pennsylvania. You see, I need to go storm chasing out in real Tornado Alley where I can see things that aren't these QLCS things where you can't see anything. Yeah. And then you end up aborting the chase, and then it drops an EF2 tornado after you abort your chase. But that you couldn't see anyways because it was a QLCS-type tornado. So how many times have you been there? Waikita? Yeah. Uh, well, I mean to the Twister Museum. Three times. Okay. Cause, and then Waikita... It's so amazing. I love it so much. It, Waikita was hit... I don't know if the city itself was hit dead on, but I know there was a tornado outbreak within the past 10 years. And there were tornadoes in the Wakita area, but I don't know if one actually hit the town itself. 2010. 2010 okay. Now also, okay, well, now we need to get to the F5 because I have something interesting to say about the F5 tornado scene. Hmm. So let's get there. Now my issue with the F5 scene, I'm just going to say it right now. So they're sitting there after it hit, I think they might call it an F5. No, they're calling it – they're sitting there after Aunt Meg is getting ready to go to the hospital. Dusty's sitting there in the back of the thing, and then he tells – No, NSSL saying it's going to be an F5. Mm. Yeah, that that's – no, that's not how that works <laughs> at yeah, all. No. But – and then they're driving through the night. You see the pretty sunrise, and then it flashes from the sunrise to a monster wedge tornado the next day mm-hmm. so i have issues with that just the way that it all evolved i mean i know why they did it they had to do it just for the way the movie rules but i don't i didn't like the way that that happened and then it's your stereotypical f5 actually the f5 tornado in the movie twister looks a lot like the 1982 binger Oklahoma tornado now i can't actually show this because i'm not going to get a copyright original from showing a picture of the binger tornado yeah Speaking, you have not mentioned any mentioned anything about your Twister post in the background. I mean, everyone can see it, but you, I'm surprised you haven't mentioned that yet. Well, I have. Okay, so I have a cow right here that I got from Twister, the Twister Museum. <laughs> and then this is an old DVD case that I have tacked up. And then this is a postcard from the Twister Museum. And then this is my big Twister poster. And then this is a Twister neon sign that someone made for me. And then right here, I have an old VHS display that they had when Twister came out. Okay, so this, I lied. It was 1981. This was the F4 tornado that hit Bangor, Oklahoma in 1981. You can see it, it's, it looks very, very similar to the F5 in the Twister, which actually, I might... Wait. Actually, you know what? While you're doing that, I'm going to look for something, too, because... There is another tornado that I think they may. I don't know. Why, if they, why did, do you see that? It literally just went to the National Weather Service website. Are you? Do you see that? I must have hit the yeah. wrong button. <laughs> okay. Why? Are, are you doing your thing? Yeah, I'm showing you. There's one tornado photo that every time I see it. I just think uh, I like it. Just give me one second. But I think Although, they really, now, I think they really now looking at looking from, at this. Can you see the entire screen? Yeah. Okay, so we have the S five from Twister. Look how similar it actually looks to the Andover tornado. Which I was is about right down to say, I think they took a lot of inspiration from Andover as well. Um, and hang on. Yeah, wow. I never actually noticed that before. I always thought it reminded me of the Binger tornado, but now looking at it, comparing it beside the Andover tornado, 
That is strikingly similar. Wow. Trying to find cool. a good photo real quick. Cool, cool, cool. And this one's actually perfect. Hang on. And it's from the... Um, okay, I'm going to quit sharing my screen now. Uh, the tornado Somehow. that I'm showing you guys is a photo from Cheyenne, Wyoming on July 16th, 1979. Oh, yes, yes. We had a nice talk about that, and then the Tornado Talk Discord. That tornado yeah. was actually officially rated F4, downgraded to F3. It's still rated F4 by Grizzulis and Significant Tornadoes. He notes that it was a minimal F4. Mm -hmm. The damage it caused in the one subdivision is damage caused by if it would have occurred today the damage it caused in the subdivision is very similar to low end f4 damage today so still probably guys, keep that f4 rate. like you can literally look at this and it would be a screenshot are you, are you sharing it are you supposed to be sharing it because i'm I am, it. I am here in a second i haven't shared it yet okay okay yeah that tornado um Let's see if I can do this. Went right through Cheyenne. Um, killed a person. Baby was blown out of a trailer and was killed, and 40 other people were injured. I believe that's Wyoming's deadliest tornado, if I remember correctly. It is, yeah. I think it's their most yeah. uh, damaging tornado as well. Like damage-wise, like cost of damage. Are you seeing my screen at all? Nope. I know exactly what you're talking about, so I can try to share it. Oh, wait, I got it. Hang on. Now, do you I'm see not it? looking at that. Hold on, let me get back into the Zoom. Uh, yes. It, it does not as wide, though, but it does have that same look. That dusty, now, dirty... Yeah, you see all that stuff flying around it? Yeah. That is from a trailer park. This was right after it annihilated the trailer park where it killed the person, where it killed the baby. Yeah. That's what so it says. It's one of the last This is as <laughs> I was going through the <laughs> <It doesn't say laughs> that. I didn't even see that. I just knew that from <laughs> studying that. Tornado. Yeah, see, oh my God. tornado blast through a mobile home park near Shane, Wyoming, watching from a quarter mile away. Peter Willing took this photograph just before. Rushing to his basement. Yeah. I guess this was coming out. I, I, I do see how it says that now, but I didn't even see that until you pointed it out. <laughs> but does it look like, like, if I saw this and then compared it to the F5 and Twister, I, I would have no doubt that they took inspiration from it. But anyway. Yeah. Um, and actually, my favorite... Um, my thing, my favorite part of the whole movie is, um, while, when they're running away from the F5 and it rips up the barn. And I need to plug my laptop in, so hold on, let me do some adjusting. Well, hurry up. Okay, so my favorite scene from Twister is when, um, Joe and Bill are running away from the F5. They just go through the barn. And they come out of the barn and start running away from it again. And it starts ripping up the barn in, like, typical tornado violent fashion. Um, oh, yeah. And that one section, the brooder house, like, gets carried away in, like, one piece. and Yeah. So, and then they go through the section with, like, all the sickles and stuff. Yeah. And I do like that they put um, – they shot the boards – into the barn and through the window from the fence. Yeah. Because, you know, they do that here at Texas Tech with the debris cannon to test. Uh, have you gone to partake in one of those? I have not. Oh, I think that would be so cool to be one of those people that do that. And also at the National Institute of, Institute of um, Insurance or whatever it is, NIST, they have, they build entire houses and destroy them with wind, yeah, with I wind know. machines. That would, that, I think that would be awesome. 
impossible to do that. There was back in 2007, 2008-ish on the Weather Channel thing with Stephanie Abrams and on the Weather Channel. And like it was a half hour long show. And I know they destroyed yeah. a trailer in a similar way. Like, do you know what I'm talking about? They kept, they recreated, uh, I forget what the show was called, but you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Just like, whether it's a trailer in a house or something, and just watching it get destroyed just because it's cool. (laughs) Because you know, you're not destroying someone's property. You're not going to injure or kill someone in the room when the roof blows off and strikes them. But I was, that's like, and then Perfect. actually going back to Twister, another tangent over. Going back to Twister, <laughs> um, after it's the very end of the film, after the tornado has dissipated and the credits are starting, and you can see the tornado damage path through the cornfield. And, oh, yeah. and you can see all the ground scouring that they put in there and all the cyclotal ground markings. And the nerd in me is gets giddy every time I see that because I'm like they did that right it looks perfect and I know they they did that themselves for part of it and then part of it was CGI um, as it mm-hmm. kept going all the way back but um, now it's not, it's after nine o'clock yeah we're gonna have to so we got it and we're going on two hours now it's an hour and fifty eight minutes yeah we need to wrap this up. So we're gonna, we're gonna wrap this up like ASAP. So one one thing, Twister the F five scene. They originally planned on destroying that house. However, it was on the national historic landmark or something, so they couldn't actually destroy it just because it was a protected house. It, but a tornado. I, th- I want to say it was rated F three. I can't remember the exact date. But I'm sure if you Google it, you can find it. Um, the house was destroyed by a tornado, just was within the past 15 years, 10 or 15 years. And the owner of the house, that looked exactly like the tornado in Twister. Yeah. That five. So I don't know when exactly that was, but do you know what I'm talking about, Tyler? Yeah, yeah, I've I've heard of that before. Yeah. yeah. Unless that's that's just one of those things you hear about, like. Uh, Supposedly, was supposed to be playing when a tornado struck the drive in theater in Canada, but that wasn't true. Yeah, I don't know if you've heard that. Yeah, so maybe it's just it was scheduled to um, show Twister, but it wasn't actually, yeah, yeah, but that that it all get the the fake news twisted, (laughs) right? Right, yeah, so I don't know if how accurate that is, but apparently, that's what happened to the house. Um, well, we know the house was slated to be destroyed. They didn't destroy it, but it it ended up getting destroyed by a tornado that looked exactly like a twister that was supposed to be destroyed in the movie. So, it's not, actually, and it's actually been abandoned. So, also oh, the tornado didn't actually hit it. I don't think so. I've seen pictures from within the past ten years or so. Okay, you from, know what? Let us Google this real quick before we get going now because I'm curious. And I think the house was near Ames, Iowa. So if you type in Ames. Um, I'm just going to go to Iowa. I wonder if that would have been the 2005 tornado outbreak that happened in Iowa. Okay. Okay, so here it is on Roadside America. Eldora movie house closed. So. Maybe that was just folklore, and I believed it. 
because I don't know exactly what to Google to find it. I'll try to look into it, and if I can find it, I'll post the link. Yeah. Can you yeah. hear me? Okay, I just popped up and said my internet connection's unstable. I mean, you... It's telling us you guys have been you guys have been babbling on too long. Shut up. All right. <laughs> Even the computer's getting Should tired we, of us. Is there anything else you want to say? Wrap, wrap, why wrap do it up. I have to wrap it up? <laughs> because I told you to. That's why. Hey, I started this thing. You wrap it up. <laughs> I don't know how to wrap it up. Okay. Okay, oh. okay so... so Okay, we're done rambling on for the past two hours, two hours and three minutes now. So we're done rambling on, going off onto our tangent. And we didn't even get to talk about everything we wanted to talk about. So. No, we really did. Because <laughs> we kept going down those tangents. So. Yeah. so, yeah. This is how a lot of our future podcasts are going to be. Yeah. Not the, well, I, we'll have to rein ourselves in a bit better moving forward. Yeah. But. Yeah. Okay. When well, we piggyback off each other, it, it's got to be on the main topic. Yeah. So. Okay. To everyone that's still here listening. <laughs> which is no one. No one's going to listen this long. Thank you for. Because, uh, you know, you can view the analytics. We're going to see a drop off after like 20 minutes. Okay. So to everyone that's still here, thank you for listening and watching us ramble about. Um, <laughs> And it was we'll supposed to be about tornado it. movies, but we talked about everything. Literally everything. We'll try and do better <laughs> next time. Uh, so it's gonna be next week is going to be um, with Jen Naramore from Tornado Talk. She, we're going to be talking about the Washington, Illinois twin, tornado. Tyler, how did you forget about that? You literally brought that up, and I asked Jen. It's been was. a minute. Come on. Okay. That's because we've been just rambling on for two okay, hours. So next week we're be, we're going to be talking so, about the Washington Illinois EF4 tornado, which happened. And tomorrow. and the New Minden Illinois EF4. Well, just the, the outbreak in general. Yeah. And so, it will not go on this long because I let us go on this long. She yeah. will knock some sense around it up. She, we need her for all the podcasts to keep us in check. Right. We we need a chaperone. <laughs> We really, we really do. <laughs> okay, so Pretty we're just going to keep rambling. So I guess we're just going <laughs> to cut it off here. So oh, follow us on Twitter. Comment below. Uh, check out the Tornado Talk Discord. Mm -hmm. Come talk to us. Uh, at the we have an our, we have our own section for the podcast, but also the other section, which is more active about anything tornadoes. So it's great. If you love tornadoes. Mm -hmm. Like us, because we're nerds. Yeah. It's a, it's a nice place to chat. <laughs> Go, okay. Yeah. So, <laughs> As we continue to ramble on. <laughs> I know, I'm here trying to wrap it up, and you keep ripping me backwards. Sorry, I'm sorry. Okay, so we're officially done. <laughs> yes. We will see you all next week. Adios. <laughs> we're not getting any viewers next week. <laughs> Well, maybe because of Jen, but that's it. Maybe. And on that note, we are done. Okay. Bye. See y'all next week. Bye. <laughs>